the the motivations behind um, getting this project off the ground was really uh, a rise against proctoring. And I know some of you may be familiar. I'm not sure if you what if you used a proctoring software um, at your institution or not, but um, we were very concerned working in the teaching and learning community, doing close collaborations with students about um, that, you know, remote proctoring of monitoring um, students for suspicious behavior while they take the virtual exams, the whole feeling of um, that invasive technology uh, that you're opening up your computer to uh, in, with some of the platforms to um, have your information access that could be identification documents and they're stored and shared in ways that the students might not be aware of. And of course, there's equity issues in situations we probably have all read about is where um, anyone with a, a skin of any color other, other than white were flagged for identification breaches and other built-in biases that AI has with respect to te uh, technology. So we wanted to try to help faculty because we heard uh, working in a teaching and learning center at Mac during the pandemic was really the motivation um, that we could see the instructors having to hastily consider alternatives to in-person assessments, largely exams and other forms of assessments, which just didn't translate well to the in-person environment, uh, or sorry, to the online environment. And I'm sure many of you experienced that same challenge. And it's a feeling over overwhelm. You had to change your curriculum. You had to learn some technologies. You had to think about how to redesign a, an assessment and hopefully deliver a good learning experience all at the same time, very hastily. Um, so we, knowing that this was going on, we knew that there was an, a need for instructors to have some more ready-made instructions, some rubrics, some examples from other from colleagues, some that had um, instructions around the use of the technology. So that um, was one of the motivations. And then other motivation was we knew, like in working in our spaces, that it is good pedagogy, good practice to look at um, assessments that integrate universal design for learning and giving students agency and choice um, that there's you know some barriers that instructors encounter in trying to come up with those multiple ways for students to indicate their learning and we did know that uh, more julia will get to it a little bit later in in the session today is that we wanted that higher order thinking skills we want assessments that are about learning not cramming for a test but also you know we were very much recognizing that there's a huge time investment for an instructor to develop a and i can hear my child in the background making noise i hope you don't hear him. um creating some alternative assessments that there's a lot of time and we just didn't have time so we're trying to come up with some with a bank of exemplars that created that integrated all of the things that people needed so we had an opportunity in Ontario. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with eCampus Ontario, and it is um, a hub for the uh, public in institutions and Indigenous institutes, colleges and universities on technology and open um, technology enabled and open learning. So they had this virtual learning strategy, and one of the categories was around digital fluency, and it very clearly said um, building assessments. So thinking perfect this is a great opportunity to get some funding so we could have a team um, from McMaster, Brock and Boreal we wanted to make the resource available in French as well because um, there is a real gap especially with open educational resources for French resources uh, we wanted to and include students in the development of these exemplars and talk about our student perspective a little later um, and we also wanted to include faculty and get um, get you know a larger kind of development team and we were fortunate enough to receive the funding to have that extra 